Welcome one and all to the LCS Challengers League. We are here with yeah. uh, a little bit of company here in my space, but I'm joined by Covey and Magical for another wonderful day here. Magical, I, I've room. already asked this. him. Look at this. How are Look you? This. I, I just got all the space I get to work with, you space. know. Uh, just straight. Hey, me too. I just have uh. to like mosh pit against Covey. So yeah. <laughs> we, we might be throwing elbows, you know. <laughs> That Should be a lot of fun, that. though, for sure, yeah. <laughs> At least you have to a little bit of space. But we did have some inclement weather, obviously, uh, take out Cubby yeah. and the Casa de la Casters internet. So here right. we are with a fun day. We've got Joshi downstairs. I'm sure you see <laughs> Kegas with Joshi paired up, so it's going to be a fun day nonetheless. Uh, but speaking of, we have uh, a little bit of fun ahead of us as well because uh, it's top of the tables coming to an end. We have... A couple weeks left here in the NACL, and I think, Covey, that's an important time to kind of rehash this little bit of a derby we have going on. Hmm, a derby, you say? <laughs> I'd say so. I'd say there's some horse races, some some top-of-the-table finishes, now I wish that we had the maybe last-second so moments. Go cluck, 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 cluck. Is that, is, is that derby? It, the, the, have you not seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail with I mean, the, the? But that's not a horse derby. I don't but see people horses. like walking like around behind the horses. Clop, 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 clop. I, I, I think well, whatever it is, I'm ready to queue it up. Yeah. All right, I, 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 I. <laughs> but we did have a little bit of fun with the derby style stuff. So we actually got to go to our own derby on the range. So let's go see how that happened. I guess. <laughs> oh, what's this? Oh, a derby invitation. Well, I gotta get my good hat on for this one. Ah, perfect. Now let's get going. All right, this is the entrance, I think. Let's, let's see if it works. Well, no one's answering yet. Stay on. is being spiked into the faces of Dignitas as nature's grasp connects on Otomo. He has cleanse, he has flash, he Destiny? does that, and Destiny gets traded back. Now I heard they have the best food here at these derbies. Oh wee! It looks like some ground beef to me. <laughs> oh, 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 the timer. Oh! 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 What? All right, y'all, we're getting this is the first time I've ever seen a horror race. Oh, oh, they're getting started now. Okay, okay, you, are you, you guys are so excited. They're getting started. Okay, the first left turn is coming up here. He's going, oh, he, he's going to take the first left turn. Okay, it's looking good. It's looking good. Looking, looking real good. Okay, he's going to take the other left turn. It looks, oh, it's coming up real quick now. It's coming up real quick. Oh, oh, oh they're going to make the left, the left turn's coming. Turn it! Oh my God, he's gonna do it again! Oh, there's a third left turn here. That that three lefts. I heard that doesn't make a right. Oh my God, he made it again! Wait, is there another left turn? There's another left turn, ain't there? There's another left turn. Well, that was my first derby, sir. You have to go. Oh, oh. well, I guess I gotta get going. We'll see you next time on the range. Well, I'm just going to say I don't think the on the range guy should ever be allowed back to a derby, but maybe he had some fun. I it, it was fun for me. I, I had a good time. I Now, I will say the dogs pouncing on the rabbit. Yeah. I, I have some questions about yeah, what here. kind of derby that was. Well, that's a traditional part of any derby. They have a hound race where they chase a little. Well, it's a, it's a fake rabbit. It's like it's a fake rabbit. Have you not side. seen the thing that goes around? Yeah, it's not real. Well, that was also a fake rabbit, Magical. I don't know what you're saying. It's not oh, like no, we had a real, real rabbit man. out there. Is Tomo a rabbit? I don't think so. I don't know. We'd have to do some scientific experiments, I suppose. I, I mean, he, he's a damn speedy rabbit, man. He, he, even, he even got promoted. He uh, did. Pretty I know. impressive. We yeah. had to give a little bit of shout out to Tomo there at the end because he did get that, honestly, great start to this LCS run here now as well to end this weekend. But it was fun. Obviously, we're keeping with this kind of uh, horse derby theme as we're getting to the end of the split. And I think it is really important to highlight a little bit of that kind of fashion when we're seeing so many contested moments in the last part of the split. And when you have a lot of runs that are available here, Magical. 
Right. I mean, the, the whole idea is that we're getting close to playoffs. Even though every single team is going to make it into the playoffs, we still want to see how they're going to match up against one another, whether we're going to see those late-season growths from a lot of these teams, especially teams towards the bottom of the standings, because the better seeding you have, the better chances you have, especially for a lot of these provisional teams, right? We want to see how these provisional teams are going to grow. We saw yesterday... Probably one of the most fun matchups in Cincinnati Fear versus Wildcard. That was and such both, a banger, man. Right, both <laughs> games were absolute bangers, but it's great to see these provisional teams and how strong a lot of them have been growing into the season. Exactly that. We also got to have some more of our casters go to the Derby, apparently, and uh, they picked oh. up a new job. Let's go ahead and uh, check out the day at the Derby. Welcome to the first ever Challengers League Derby. And they're off. CLG leaps out of the gate with a strong start. Their new jockey copy really is showing the rest of the race how it's done. Provisional teams have clumped up towards the back, but Fear bucking the trend and jumps out to the front of the pack. But stack the deck. Wildcard gallops to join the leaders. Hold on. We're starting to see some separation now as we see a burst of speed coming up from FlyQuest. Only they can maintain. Never mind. Dignitas has cemented themselves in the lead with Cincinnati Fear, Wildcard, and Cloud9 not far behind. What's this? Cloud9 is changing jockeys in the middle of the race. Amenis hops off and Diplex pops on. I have never seen anything like this in my decades of commentating horse races. And it might be just what they needed. They're neck and neck for the lead as we push into the final stretch. Had a little bit of a change of a riders there at the end. <laughs> I love that but, part. Uh, really, really good stuff. I uh, <laughs> love the day at the Derby again. You guys should be uh, some horse race announcers here for sure. Uh, but Covey, as we do take a look at the standings here, we obviously see Cloud9 in that top spot, but Dignitas will be playing later today. And I, I'm, this stream, I got to say, I, when we get to the schedule, it's kind of loaded today. Uh, we have six challenger yep. teams, uh, everyone on the top half of the standings besides Fly, uh, Fly and EG, who are even, and of course... Uh, EG having subs, I feel like, is still a team that we think pretty highly of. But again, I got to highlight one of the top stories, Fear and Wildcard. It's not just Wildcard that's a great provisional team. Fear, that series yesterday, I feel like they were one of the first teams that had a really good read on what Wildcard likes to yeah. draft, how they play. And they beat them really soundly in that series. So uh, I'm really excited to see how these teams continue to climb as two provisional teams are real scary in this league. <laughs> they really are sitting in the top four spot, Magical. They even, oh, my favorite thing is Fear even beat them at their own game, right? It's not like they, they just did. spread them. They played the late game as well and still beat them, which has generally been where Wildcard has won. Play sides, baby. You can beat Wildcard <laughs> through sides. <laughs> they, they take those respect bands and then uh, play sides. That's all you got to do. Uh, but I do want to go ahead and highlight what we have in front of us today because I do feel like we have a lot of fun stuff. Obviously, we're starting off with the Immortals Progressive Challengers versus Fly Fam. Oh, no, it's the wrong there one. Go. There you go. <laughs> it's the uh, Fly. Yeah, wrong we, had I, I, we, had, we had gotten switched on our, our, our notes here as the duo cast here. Uh, but it is FlyQuest Challengers versus Hunter Thieves Challengers. Then we've got Dignitas Challengers versus Team Liquid Honda Challengers. That one is going to be a banger after Team Liquid showing what they promised us at the beginning of the split yesterday. And then we got Evil Geniuses Challengers versus Golden Guardian. It, it's it's a solid day, top to bottom. I'm excited for the last matchup because GG has been playing really well of late, is uh, too. So uh, definitely a day to look forward to on the stream. And uh, we got to kick things off with FlyQuest versus 100 Thieves. Is FlyQuest looking to put some more wins on the board? And a struggle for them a little bit of late. We'll see if they can take it today. Especially because they're right in the growth. middle of the standings right now, right? They're literally dead mm -hmm. even. That's the biggest thing. Uh, I think that you you see this late season push. We're talking about the Derby. Well. The, the horse that we need to keep an eye on is this FlyQuest Challengers roster, but we do need to look at their opponents today. Uh, top of the table themselves, 100 Thieves Challengers. I feel like we've gotten a lot of the flavor that we expected with this team. Maybe not as many huge carry performances from that Prodigy in the top lane sniper, but we have been seeing the steadiness and carry potential of Unforgiven and Pretty. And we've also just seen that this team has grown a lot in this split, correct? It's like, at the beginning, they did have their struggles. You could tell they weren't quite all there together, but they really have gotten the synergy. And even if the very young, talented so top side of Sniper and Yukino aren't the hard carries, they still are pr putting up really good performances, especially when Sniper is not on Orn. Just gonna say that right now. I'd like to say I'm not on the <laughs> Orn. But outside of that, we what see that 100 Thieves Challengers are looking like a really solid team as they continue to surge in the standings. And uh, for me with this team, I, I think it is really curious to, you know, see the growth of Yukino, but also just how good this bot lane is for Hunter Thieves. I mean, 
Unforgivens in this league, <laughs> like we just have to kind of talk about and recognize it. He is so damn good. This next clip, watch him space the Zeri in this clip. This is just some ridiculous stuff coming out of Unforgiven. The fact that his form has been this good in this league, it's been so impressive. And now going up against FlyQuest, who Masu has been really impressive. Uh, it's a good chance for Masu to test himself up against who we think is the best AD in the league now. It really is. And we got to bring up the FlyQuest roster because there are some changes as times do be a change. We've got Winsome in as Ayla has joined the LCS squad. So that does bring about a little bit of difference when we were looking at Keetong for a lot of this uh, roster, for a lot of the split. Obviously, Masu had been talked about being in LA now with the team. We have the roster together. I think it's a powerful point for them to kind of leap off the rest of the season here. Magical. And you look at how Winsome is as a player, right? This, how he was in the LCS. And it, sure, maybe the mechanics weren't always there, but it was much more about shot calling. That's kind of why he's been brought on the team in the first place, was how he can help lead the team and what kind of calls he makes. Kitong, while he was a great player, he did a great job filling in. They needed someone who could be more of the shot caller, who can provide more of the charge. I think that mixed in with Masu and how great this player has been playing so far is only going to make this bot lane even stronger, which makes me that much more excited to see how Masu, this unknown quantity going into the year, how people kind of were like, ah, he, he could be all right, but he has absolutely dominated despite the ping that he's had going up against Unforgiven, all pro LEC player. I think this is going to be a much better matchup than you'd normally think at the very beginning of the split. And I, I, I think the biggest credit to Winsome is the fact that there were LCS fans just questioning like, are they going to keep Winsome, right? Like, cause right. I mean, the team was eight and one, uh, like they were playing really well. I mean, we know how good Ewa is covering Academy <laughs> in the past, but I, I feel like that is such a compliment to Winsome. And also, I know from talking with FlyQuest, uh, like, the, the way they put it is, like, Ewa opens up the champ pool quite a bit. We know that Ewa yes. does have a big pool, yeah. uh, but Winsome on his champs has been really sound. And keep in mind, a couple of those champs are the Thresh, are, are the Tom yeah. Kench, so maybe Masu gets a little bit more empowered in this matchup. And I do wonder how that works out for them, because we have seen Masu, and he's given these resources. I mean, he can carry, even on the ping, you don't, don't <laughs> hold him down. But obviously, I think the, the biggest question is how that 2v2 works, because I think we did see a lot of synergy with Kitong and Masu in the terms of how they approach the 2v2, and I'm wondering if that changes, or maybe even levels up a little bit with Winsome Magical. See, and this is where I, I do think it's going to level up a little bit. I think that Kitong was a great player and played well with Masu. But I think that if you look at how Winsome plays, even if he's slightly more reserved than I think Kitong is, he'll at least provide more shot calling so he can help out not only Masu, but probably even call more for Yuji to uh, come down to the bot lane and really try to get this entire team a better identity than we've seen in these past couple weeks. That's usually when they falter. It's just because they don't seem like they're one cohesive unit. And I, I do want to bring that point. I know you're you're highlighting him, maybe Yuji coming down bot lane, but the biggest focal point, I feel like, has been Yukino for 100 Thieves in terms of how he sets up the team, right? He does tend to be a little bit aggressive, but I've loved the play we've seen from this guy so far, Cubby. I, I think that Yukino's last few games have actually been so good. I, I Some of the Great. paths that this guy's tanking, like on the on the gankers, yeah. I, I watched the Malakai game last night where he flashed over Dragon Wall to get around like two wards and was able to pull <laughs> off the gank. And then he based did his top Krugs as he was red side, and then like affected top lane, yep. he won mid lane later. And the fact that like, you know, we have a player that's 17 uh, playing in his first split this competitive, those are moves like I was watching the bottom, like that's what Yankos would do, right? <laughs> like we're gonna flash over the wall because oh. we know we get first blood if we make this play. No, these and are LPL like, special moves. And Lennon knows <laughs> all about those. Like, that, come that, on. That's there true, you, you would know that, <laughs> I, I, would. I will say. Uh, but again, like the fact we have a player this young, that is able to make intelligent plays like this. And, you know, talking with 100 Thieves, their staff too, they're so excited about how Yukino just comes into the building and handles with learning every single day. Yep. And I, I think that we're really starting to see that in his play as well. I'm excited to see if that grows. Yeah. Uh, again, this is a guy that when you talk to junglers throughout Semi Pro and you talk to players in the Challenger League, they all talk about Yukino, especially when you're talking to Perry, who we just saw yesterday, a, a kind of dominate wildcard. He stands pair or Yukino out of all the other jokes. He said, I want to face Yukino. I want to play this guy. And, and it's so interesting to see there's, that kind of story behind the scenes. There's a bit of a rivalry there, too. A little bit, with, a little uh, bit. You know, Perry being at EGP in spring and Yukino in summer. So a little bit. I feel like Perry has something to prove there. But <laughs> I, I, I think it also, you know, goes to say that you know, some of the players do respect Yukino's play, yeah. and, and that's really good. Uh, and we're going to have to see if he can step up against Yuji, who I, I think Yuji made great strides, especially in summer of last year, and how much better he was playing uh, the map and around his lanes. 
we've kind of seen that this year. We've also seen uh, Yuji get a little bit lost, I think, in mid-game yeah. with this team. Mm -hmm. I think it's been a little bit harder for FlyQuest because I, Pop's been an issue, uh, which we'll talk about more on the cast. And I, I think Spyrex has had his moments outside of lane, but in lane, it's still eh. Yeah. Uh, so it's not like Yuji has everywhere to play, but still, we are looking for more of that sophomore to kind of pick up uh, here for FlyQuest. He and lost his diamond. I was, say, they, they <laughs> I was about to say, I was about to say, they did lose Tomo Diamond, the veterans of the player, uh, the players of the team uh, over the off season. So that does kind of make it so that now that you're in your sophomore year, you are more of the leader. We've seen that Yuji has had to fill more of that role. And I think this is where having Winsome come in will help build up this team a lot better. Yeah, indeed it will. We'll see how it all works out on the Rift, though, as I believe we are ready for our first game draft. So I'm going to do some movie magic. I'm going to get out of here. Oh, oh bye, Cubby. Oh, you can my. have the mic. Ooh. I, Where does next he time? go? Where, where does he disappear to? Oh, I, my I don't God. Know. He's going to be hanging out for now. Next time we do that, though, you're going to dab me up. We're going to have a nice, you know, bro moment here as... Anyway, what's up, Wait, guys? So now this is my question: Is how does it feel having all this elbow space now, like I do? You know, I honestly, oh, I kind of miss having the cell by me. It was a, it was a comfort, not a bother. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know what's comfort is champion select as we're getting into this one, uh, and we got to talk about our teams. I'm looking towards our jungler still, especially with how Maokai Sejuani have kind of dominated the meta. At I'll be honest, I don't really want to see either of those played by either players, mostly just because I'm getting bored of it. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I always appreciate your honesty here, Mad Magical. And, uh, you know, there is that duo in the Maokai plus the Sejuani, but it is worth noting that Vi would be that other tertiary jungler that we have seen be very popular. Two of them are off the board now. Really hey. curious if FlyQuest decides to take away Sejuani, maybe put some priority on getting a bot laner. Uh, I think that Unforgiven in this Zaya Zeri handshake has been very good on both sides of it. Would love to see FlyQuest maybe get Unforgiven out of that uh, throw him off a little bit. Uh, whatever this guy's played, it's been really damn good, but uh, we will see is Oh, respect to the Draven. Okay. Uh, maybe early Zeri? Maybe early Lucian then? That's what I was about to ask you, because that doesn't tell me early Zaya. That tells me more, like, they want to grab something like that Zeri, like the yeah. Lucian that we've been seeing more. I mean, Lucian, it's not like he's completely fallen out of the meta currently. It's just not quite as top tier as he once had been. I... I really think that Zeri Lulu is the winning matchup uh, and would love to see Lulu and or Zeri secured here from FlyQuest. Uh, but hey, uh, we did mention okay. junglers. We're used to seeing Elise bad. Yuji uh, got a pentakill on Elise in CQ actually the other week. Pretty cool clip on his Twitter if you want to go check that out. Uh, but definitely going to go for that early aggression here. Uh, so early game jungle prior going over to FlyQuest in this draft. Yeah, but Sejuani... The thing that I didn't want to see picked up by either of them is still up, and that is an obvious pick to take for Yukino. The Zeri is also a really good yeah. takeaway to deny that going into the hands of Masu and Winsome. So I expect I'm actually a little surprised that they get the Lulu, but also I guess not too surprised because Sejuani, you don't have to grab it right now. You know that you're gonna get it on that third R pick. I uh, I'm not surprised at all. Uh hey Mazel, we've got Zeri Lulu for Hunter Thieves. You got thoughts there for Unforgiven? Shocker! <laughs> Uh, he I shocked. Lo uh, I, love, I love the commentary there. Just yeah. shocker. Oh, no, I, I gotta hey, take. Hey, I gotta take that's advantage. A shocker. That's a shocker. Callista yeah. Nautilus. I gotta take advantage of the situation I'm in. Uh, but I, I will say, Callista Nautilus. I mean, this is all early game for FlyQuest. Uh, really big emphasis on the first three, first six waves. Seeing what this Elise can get done. Hunter Thieves. They're still gonna play for that scaling. Take Sejuani. They can find the melees later in draft. Uh, as we are matching roles that we're showing so far. Uh, really curious if 100 Thieves takes a couple things that can bridge them to the later stages of the game. Uh, I think Renekton for Sniper might be really big, just give them a point of power on the map. Uh, right. Curious if we see FlyQuest take that away along with some other champs. No, I'm looking at that Scion as something that is also climbing Group. up in the ranks. Yeah, it's something that you could take uh, if you're on 100 Thieves. I actually kind of would expect to see that banned away by Fly, just to try to deny something that can be that meatball later on that's hard to deal with in lane phase. Mm -hmm. Zier taken away from Spyrox, another champion that he's performed very well at. And we look at these players, right? We look especially towards the young top side of the map for 100 Thieves up against Philip, a player who is in his sophomore year as well when you look at how he is playing in the, the Challengers League. It hasn't been his best performance. You kind of talked about that now. So going up against someone who is touted as being the hot new thing, how do you think that they should look to really hit at Sniper to make Philip be in the best position possible? I, I, I mean, we'll see if they end up giving Philip. Uh, I mean, it's likely that Philip's going to have to, like, blind pick, right? So maybe they get rid of a, a matchup that could be bad for Philip. Maybe they just tell Philip, hey, you know, do your best up there. 
Uh, again, this is all early game coming out. And it is worth noting, I, I know that Philip it hasn't been his best split. Uh, but we have seen some good moments from Philip, especially that wild card game two where he was on that Fiora. Dropped 13 kills and won the side lane really <laughs> hard against Moose Hater uh, with the help of Yuji too. So, uh, you know, even Sniper, he loves that Fiora and even paying a little bit of respect towards Philip. So, uh, good to see. It kind of makes me think that we are going to see more of that tank pick for Sniper here in the top lane. Ooh, Probably ban. get pretty the final pick with the Victor with Talia banned away. Oriana is something that kind of sticks out in my mind as pretty, uh, that he can play pretty well. I, I think the Victor ban for me, actually, I wouldn't be surprised if Spyrax goes to something like a Rise here. Uh, okay. Again, okay. just focusing on that early game priority uh, as well. I mean, you do have AD options in the mid lane, given that you are running Elise. So maybe a Tristana uh, could come out. Ooh. Just more priority here for Spyrax and Double Marksman. That said, uh, I think Trist goes down a priority when Jax is blinded here yep. by Sniper. So Philip will have a chance to counter. What do you think that uh, I'm looking at it like I like when we see Philip on his chase, even though it is a hard matchup into something like Jax. The gangplank is pretty good as well, just because yep. the barrels can deal with a lot of that. So getting Philip in this comfortable position, this is kind of what I was thinking. Why I was thinking maybe you get the blind pick for Sniper, hold on to the final pick for Pretty to see if you can get him in the best matchup possible against Spyrex. Uh, I think the gangplank's good here. Again, uh, FlyQuest, they need some sort of scaling. They have all early game on the map. Uh, GP is something, if it goes late, where they have some strength. And GP is really good in the champs that are showing so far, 400 Thieves. So uh, we will see if that can be broken. Now, I got to say, Pretty, uh, if I look at his champs being played, he's a big fan of the Syndra. Uh, so Jace is a very aggressive matchup for Spyrax in the mid lane. Uh, some of the counters that we would usually see are taken off the board here for Pretty. Uh, I love the target ban on his Talia as well as Pretty has been so dominant on that champ. Not just this yes. split, but past splits too. Uh, the highlight so, reels that we had from last yeah. split when he was playing that on IMTA. We're, we're all accustomed to those Talia plays. We know exactly Syndra's, how good he is. Syndra is risky here if you go for Control Mage, but that oh. I mean, that's Pretty's pick, so it will be okay. the Syndra. I got to say, though, like one of the real points of power that Elise has, she can attack mid at so many different angles given that she is ranged. Uh, and with a the Jace there, I mean, this is something where if you get Cinder's Flash out early, that's a lane that FlyQuest can play through. So I think it's a really big emphasis on just mid and bot, given the draft for FlyQuest. Expect usually to spend a lot of time in those two areas and really want to see if they can play through mid because if Spyrax is able to go affect the bot lane too, that can help the Callista Nautilus win so much harder. And looking over on the other side for 100 Thieves, I do like this Jax pickup, especially when you have something like Sejuani on your team. Something that you can utilize pretty early on. Yep. People always kind of underestimate the early game Jax has, especially when you have that bruiser jungler. Uh, I mean, Jax always goes up in priority when Sejuani's in the draft, right? It's good right. into it. It's good with it. Uh, so, And it's been a really good champ for Sniper. I think that Sniper's best play at the split uh, was that 1v3 that he had in the Baron pit against CLG going back that was on the Jax. Uh, so... We'll see if Sniper can take it to Philip Again, Philip hasn't had the best split, especially in lane. Uh, Sniper, I think he's had some great lanes and some lanes that he's lost because he takes risks. Love that from a young player. We'll see if he can take some good ones today against Philip and FlyQuest. And 100 Thieves can continue to put together what's been a very good second round Robin for him. And for FlyQuest, like they've got to take risks as well. They've got risky plays. They got the early game style they've drafted for themselves up against 100 Thieves challengers. And I'm looking at, like you said, the mid-jungle duo. This is the power they had last year with Spyrex and Yuji. How they played together, roaming around the map. We really haven't gotten to see too much of that this year. Now, I, I will say, uh, we're getting an update from production real quick. Uh, there was a crash after draft. Uh, yeah. So, a little bit I more need time feeling. to pick up my pen, so give me a sec. Oh, you, see, I, I don't have a pen today. I, usually, I do like yeah, the pen flips, you pen. know. It's a good distraction for me. I don't have it, but, you know... We may or may not have Mazel able to step back in, as we do have a, a couple minutes to kill, if, if you'd like. Uh, Mazel, we, we, we could get your Is thoughts on Hi. Here. Oh, there he is. I'm there back. He is. He's back. Welcome. It's just crazy. Where did you come uh, from? I oh, just my came out God. Of my mind is blown. Woo! Uh, no, it, it is interestingly enough. I, I think I'm I'm very happy to see that we actually get a little bit of change up, like you were kind of mentioning, <laughs> for Masu and, and Winsome. And I think having this forward aggression for them is going to be super important for FlyQuest. Uh, and also, you should, UG being on the Elise, it's always a little bit scary. I don't know if you're an arachnophobe, but I am, for sure. Uh, UG Not. in early game, big fan. Uh, hey, so... you guys want to know a funny story? I've been bit by a Black Widow before. Wow. Did you no, go to the hospital? Yes, I actually did. I had to Good. go to the hospital for it. Um, <laughs> if not, was, you probably would have died. <laughs> I, I was 12 years old, and I got bit by a Black Widow, and my arm swelled to the size of Popeye's. And I had to get the anti-venom. 
shot in my butt, and that was the most painful shot yeah. I've ever had in my entire that life. Sounds awful. It was awful. That you awful. could feel the 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 serum coursing through your veins with each yep. heartbeat. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Spiders are not fun. Yeah, uh, I'm from Texas. I have no fear of and, spiders, uh, though. Even after uh, that, I don't. Uh, spiders well, don't bother me. That's something wrong with you. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm having a weird day, man. I, I'm casting from Mazel's place, and now I'm hearing about how Mad Magical got a shot in his butt because he got bit True. by a spider. Grape yeah. said that we are a Mazubi. Uh, Mazubi. Which, you know. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. And we apparently can't hurt him. Uh, but uh, <laughs> that's terrible, grapes. <laughs> it, is, it is pretty, it's real pretty bad. interesting. I, I think the interesting point that we, when we had talked about coming into this one, we had put a lot of spotlight on Yukino <sighs> as well. And on the Sejuani, there's going to need to be a response to Yuji's early game. And I think that's where I'm really putting a big spotlight on Yukino for 100 Thieves right now in the early game. You have Unforgiven, you got Destiny, you got Pretty. Late game is going to be perfect. But it's all well, about that early game. So let me ask, are you like me and think that we're going to see Yukino really play around the top side of the map initially? Or do you think he's going to try to answer Yuji with the mid bot lane plays? I would rather see an answer. I, I think with, you okay. can be so punitive with Sejuani, uh, especially once you hit that level six. And I think you can have some really, really good lockdown moments onto the, the Elise. I don't know if that's what we'll get. I'm not big brain, right? That's Cubby here. Uh, uh, <laughs> or Mazubi. Uh, the second half of Mazubi. Uh, but I, I do think that... I would rather see that kind of reactive play to what UG is going to be trying to put on the roof. All right. All right. I uh, so when breaking out some of the big brain here, uh, blue right, side let's... Elise. We're gonna go Raptors red into Krugs and then go bot probably. Raptors uh, red so, Krugs. Okay. Yeah, that's gonna be the play. We're gonna have to see how Yukino is able to answer because he's gonna want to be bot at the same time if he does want to answer. It's not something they win, but if you survive the first couple of waves, yeah, as Zeri plus Lulu. Eventually, you can do okay into this Callista. So I, I think that's going to be the real strategy here for 100 Thieves, just to deter that bot lane aggression. And that's why, for me, mid lane could be so interesting, because if Yuji does want to switch it up and go get the flash mid, again, you can snowball on Syndra. She's not strong early. Jace is, and Elise can attack mid from every angle. So yeah. definitely want to see if that's something where FlyQuest... I, I expect them to play through bot and that priority, but if things get active mid, I, I would really prefer that for FlyQuest, because I think that Spyrax has been... One of the better performers at the later stages of the game. He's the one that makes plays for FlyQuest when things do go mid to late. Yeah, uh, and especially now that we are getting it, I feel like a different look. Maybe it's not a different look. We all know Sniper is a very hard carry player, but we've definitely been seeing a trend towards the tanks more so. But now we get this kind of side lane style with the Jacks, where we have the, I guess, versatility to play a side lane or play team fight. And you have Philip with the the gangplank that's gonna be a, a menace it feels like every time i see philip on this he's getting active early once he hits level six we'll cross the map and the communication is key but that side lane for sniper is also going to be a little bit important yeah now uh I, I will say uh we are awaiting a pc restart here for 100 thieves we so are. we might we might have to wait a couple minutes but, but before we go to a break i, I do want to just ask you guys real quick okay um where is 100 thieves in the league because uh, mm -hmm. like I've been watching a, a lot of tape, mm. a lot of odds. We got a great stream today with a lot of really competitive teams. Dignitas and C9 were uh, pretty much our top two teams. They both made changes. We don't feel like they've really mm. changed. Like we got to see gameplay still from Dig. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to just yeah. say that Dig's you know lower. I want to see them at least play. But where's Hunter Thieves for you guys? Because this I'll is put a middle of the pack, like really, mid, just upper middle? middle of the pack. Because uh, my question is, are they the the third best team that we have, or are they better Ooh. or worse? I'd say worse. Ah, I have them at three. Ah, uh, okay. I'll put them at five. I'll put them at five. Them? I, 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 you know, this is gonna sound. I've got fear you're gonna, above you're them. gonna make fun of me. I'm gonna fear. put fear. Okay. I'm gonna put fear. I'm gonna put fear above them as well. I think yeah, I put I, fear, and what else would I put above them? <laughs> Well, C9, yeah. well, C uh, C C9 dig fear, yeah. and I'd say it's it's a toss up between wild card and uh, hundred. I I very much favor 100 mm. moving forward. I think that they I think they're actually playing like really controlled games, okay. really sound. So I want to see if they can do that today. Yeah, we are going to sit into a little break though. Apparently, we still do have some PC issues, so we will be back as soon as possible with your games for LCS Challenger. Hmm, I wonder what's on TV. Your carries, like you're saying, are. Uh, I was wondering when we saw the. Uh. Hello, welcome into the LCS Challengers League. I'm Magical, joined in by the bald one himself. Nah. Breaking news, it's breeding time. Despite the woes of their LCS counterparts, Dignitas Challengers is good. 
led by veterans Insanity and Diamond, seeing a return to form from Tomo, young players Exu and Boo have taken the rift by storm. Speaking of storms, Cloud9 have tied them at first. For more on that, let's go to Mazel with the weather. It's raining cats and dogs! But Mazel, I can't hear you. How are Lost and Zazel doing? Thunder and lightning! Thunder and lightning! What's going on? It's over, Rizzler. You have nowhere no. else to go. Yo, <laughs> gamers, no. one last time. Are you tired of your League of Legends games ending in 30 minutes with a Baron fight into a mid lane push? Well, get on down to NACL Real Backdoors! It's Backdoors galore! Get yours before the storage floor has no more! Boom! 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 Sign up with the hashtag NACL on Twitter.com for 10 minutes off your next Real Backdoor order! If you want some more real backdoor action, make sure you go to twitch.tv slash challengers league, twitch.tv slash path to LCS, twitter.com slash path to LCS, youtube.com slash path to LCS. Wait, we don't have that one. Um. Yep, yep. Hello and welcome to Moose Haters Garen International Travel Agency. Do you want to play Garen? All you need to take is Ghost, Phase Rush, and a second IMZ, and you can play Garen wherever you want around the world. Previously. Oh, hey, Cubby. Oh, hey, Rafa. You were in their meeting today. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Listen, I was busy with LCS because I'm a full-time caster. Well, how was your Academy story meeting? Rafa, you know it's called Challengers League? Or at least you would know if you were there. <laughs> oh, come on. Besides, we added six more teams that have way more fun games, so you're missing out. The most valuable prospects already got promoted. Yeah, that's the point of the league. Promote the good players. You mean like me? Okay, you know what? Casting with flowers was better. All right, no. teams should quake. Call no. the Rizzler today. What no. if there was nowhere to hide? Oh, I know sorry, Skytech. You're not getting away from this one. What if there was nowhere to run? For this side. Blaze is like, I can deal with them. I'm fine. I'm okay. What if there was no will to fight? Come on, guys. We could beat them if we work together. Is the rest, or rest of C9 is on Baron, and now he's going to be solo killing again. He's just, he's trying to get the best Hoon impression oh, here. MNS2, Nightmare on LCS. Don't miss On the Range featuring Mazel, weeknights at 11. That's nothing on. I'm just going to play some League. Hello, hello, welcome back. We are getting ready for our first game. Sorry about the delays, you know, California and weather. We just don't know how to handle it too well here, unfortunately. But we're getting close to our first game between FlyQuest Challengers and 100 Thieves Challengers. Covey, I know you've been having some issues as well. Uh, I don't, where'd Lennon go? Where, 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 uh, you know, he, I, I kicked him out of his own room. Ah, you know, okay. I gotta say, the game takes precedent. Uh, gotcha. So, yeah, you know, I appreciate him getting me, you know, internet for the day. Making sure that, you know, we can still cover what is a great slate of games we have today on NACL. But unfortunately, he had to leave his own room. So, uh, you know. Okay. <laughs> well, you know what? That's fine because, like we said, we're getting close to our first game. We've already gone through draft. They just had to reload. There were some issues restarting PCs. Hopefully, everyone under understands. Also, I just didn't want to push the button to start the game, you know. Those kind of issues yeah. because everyone knows I'm the only one who has the button. But yes. let's look at the drafts and kind of remind everyone what we were talking about before. FlyQuest having drafted a composition more towards the early game. We're really looking towards how UG is going to play around the mid to bot lane. But then 100 Thieves, while they have some scaling, we still want to see how Yukino will answer UG because we know UG is going to look for these early plays. I'm going to I'm gonna steal a line that uh, Whippo said on an LCS okay. broadcast. You know, like, when you are when you have a team that's scaling, you still have to find your moments to be aggressive. And that's what we're going to be looking for from 100 Thieves in this game because they like have that. a team that's going to scale. Uh, like the only winning lane they're gonna have early is gonna be that Jax up top, and that's not even a hard winning lane. Uh, you need Yukino to come up there and help. So we're gonna have to see if, if Yukino can kind of ready the course for the team to get into the later stages, where Hunter Thieves have been really solid this split, uh, especially off the back of Unforgiven, who is crazy, uh, and he's on a Zeri, so, you know. <laughs> I mean, we've seen a lot of pop-off performances from Unforgiven on yeah, this I'm, champion, so. We saw a 17-minute pentakill, like, in between yeah, two turrets, or something two turrets like deep. Something yeah. just casual, you know? Just can't cash saying, yeah, I'm good at this champion. You know, you, you give this over to me. I'm just going to carry all that good jazz. A lot. I, I mean, always love that player. You know, pick me this champ. I carry. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, except unless it's Rafa. Don't trust him. 
Uh, oh, okay. I will trust them, but I will trust that we are into our first game here. And we might have some shenaniganeries here, Covey, as all the fly quests are grouped up and they are booking it towards the top side of the map. This is my day to flame Rafa on broadcast because we don't have internet at home. That's that's that, that's what I've decided. Uh, but at the oh, so moment, so he can't hear you. Oh boy, scouting. Uh, okay, sniper. sniper. Nice dredge line, but he was protected by the wall, strangely enough. So he was able to leap strike out of there. Okay, hey, well done. Oh. Now this will be a ward kill. They're gonna actually gift it over to Philip. Yep. Uh, okay. So looks like Philip. I didn't see whose sweeper that was. It was attacked by the Jace. Philip should be able it to get UG two. It was UG sweeper. Yeah, I, I think Philip will be able to get two on that first wave now that he does have that ward kill. That is very helpful for the GP, uh, who did not for first strike. And we'll see if Philip puts together a good game. Uh, as you know, for Philip, it's been. A, I would say not the best split coming off of his LCS performance. We were hoping uh, for a little bit more from Philip, especially in lane. Uh, but hey, did have a really nice game too against Wildcard, and maybe that's something that Philip can use to you know, carry throughout the rest of the split. When you talked about this matchup as well, the Jax versus Gangplank, where it is favored towards Jax, but it's not like the Gangplank is going to be any slouch, especially if you're able to get that level two experience lead, since mm -hmm. Cypher had to go for Leap Strike first. Hey, curiously, actually. Sniper has a creep to his name. I'm wondering how that happened. It must have been a zombie ward. Uh, it was ward. the zombie ward. Yeah, okay. Well, not enough to, to net two, but not bad for Sniper. Uh, now, what we teased early uh, before we had the break, Matt Magical, it was Elise's pathing. Remember I said Raptors, Red, Krugs to bot? And we'll see how Yukino can answer. Well, right now, Yukino has skipped over his own Raptors because he knows that he has to be on this side of the map to try and answer this Elise. Well, that's also because Pretty was able to place down a nice ward. Yep. With that whole venture where they saw everyone moving towards Sniper on the top half, Pretty went down, put a ward right outside of the Raptors, so they know exactly where UG is, and it is countering that play that you had called out was most likely to happen for FlyQuest. Yeah, so Yukino, he's going to three camp, wrap up the Gromp, and try and be bot. We'll see what move UG decides to make. He could walk through the lane as uh, there is priority on uh, the bot lane of FlyQuest as UG making his way down here. Under Thieves, they know how far back they have to play. Yukino will be here to answer. Here comes Yuki, uh, Yuji wrapping around the bend. Instead of looking to push back Yukino. Maybe even threatening that he could dive since it is Elise getting a little bit of damage on no his way destiny. We walk and he's walking all the way oh. through with a cocoon. First blood on the destiny. Beautiful from Yuji. He used the sweeper to make sure that he was not spotted. And the bot lane's still level one on the side of 100 Thieves. So they just find the dredge line on the destiny. They take him down. Really well played. Yeah, I was surprised. Yukino, he had just finished off Gromp, and he went back, not expecting that that dive was actually going to be attempted, and now he's here, pinned under the turret, just to protect for Unforgiven from another gank. Good start for Yuji, of course. On this Elise, you, know, you kind of have to play like a maniac early. Uh, doing a nice job of that as Philip. Oh, Flash. Ooh, Flash yeah. from Philip barely was able to survive that empowered auto. I, I like the trade, though, from Sniper. Trading Flash for Flash there, very much worth it. He's going to get the yes. early TP out of Philip. Uh, and now, you know, something else I talked about, the plays around mid for the FlyQuest uh, team could be very deadly against Cinder. We're going to take a second look. Again, Under Thieves, they felt like they were safe. Yukino is not here because the wave isn't crashed yet, so he thought he could do a camp before it crashes. Yukino was right in that, but because the dredge line landed, because of the range of the lease, Yuji was still able to force the play, end up taking down Under Thieves. I also love it. Just you look at that play, right? And the perfect position Yuji was in to not only get the cocoon, but then get the explosive spiraling yeah. as well yeah. without taking a bit of aggro. It was all beautifully played from FlyQuest. And now that they have a frozen wave in this bot lane, things are looking really difficult for Unforgiven Destiny, a bot lane that has been the biggest power tool for Fly uh, for 100 Thieves to really play around. And the fact they were able to pull that wave, keep in mind Unforgiven's yet to base, so that's an item advantage now for the Callista. And Elise on her second clear. We'll be able to, looks like still skipping over the Gromp. She's yet to base two, uh, but should be able to, you know, go back bot and uh, affect the lane. We'll see what happens after the Raptors. I, I do want to see Elise try and get a base in. Uh, we can see how far up FlyQuest are playing. They don't want to let Unforgiven base. They want to make sure that he's staying on this item threshold uh, as they try and deny that cannon. Not going to quite be able to pull that off. There's a little bit of a fight over Scuttlecrab. Leave that one over to Yukino right there. No, Yuji got it. Oh, Yuji did get yeah. it. Wow. Okay, I'm surprised. Point. Well played. Yeah. Nicely played. All right. Denying even more in, the, in this bot lane. Yuji only needed that one play, and this bot lane is fully controlled by FlyQuest, even looking mid lane. Pretty, he might be doing a good job of kind of comparing against Sparrex, but he's not able to really impact or leave this lane to try to see if he can help out Yukino in any way to get the jungle control back. 
And Yukino knows that he's just gonna take some health. They're still, still go for this. I dive, would be surprised maybe? if you go for this dive with all three yeah. members here. You, you kind of just get the plates. I think yeah. that's what they're really trying to do is get as much of that plate down as possible so Masu can get more gold. It, it is the least Nautilus, so I mean, you could get real frisky, but you can't be in there on the hover again. Right. Uh, and also, Yuji, you know, not having it based yet. Uh, right. I, I think well done. Uh, but that bot lane pressure, likewise, still want to make sure that bleeds into something, so instead of the bot dive, it will just be the dragon, and they're A okay with that. I love this because it still makes sure that Unforgiven is not backing. He can't really leave this bot lane because now the dragon being started up by FlyQuest, the pressure they have exerted in this early game, the look that you wanted to see when we look at how draft has been for this team. Well, 100 Thieves are a team that tend to play more round mid to late game. They're not even get, letting them have that tempo to get to that point. I, this is what FlyQuest has to do in this draft, so I, I do appreciate that they are pointing this out. A sniper finds another barrel. As long as you find the barrels, you can win the trades on the jacks. Uh, I am surprised though that Yukino... I, I feel like the protection over bot has been really sound. It's been good from Yukino, but uh, I want to see if he can go impact the top side as we highlighted in draft. Mm -hmm. The one winning lane that 100 Thieves has early, it is Jax and the GP, and there is a, still a small window where Philip doesn't have that flash available. Uh, so, really curious if Yukino might be able to hit it here uh, after he takes the red. It is difficult, though, because now that more I think about it, you go make this play on a sniper, right? You sure you get the kill. So you, see, that happens. Mm -hmm. But then, what does Yuji do? Yuji just goes straight bot lane yep. and dives Unforgiven and Destiny again. They're level 5 and level 4, respectively. There's not the wild growth to protect them, to give them that extra safety against all the bursts that's going to come out of Yuji and Masu. That said, it still is a 1k gold lead right now for FlyQuest. I, I think you're right. You know, the plan is to continue to attack the Zeri Lulu, make sure it does not get off the ground. And I gotta say, though, that, that, that's a respectful strategy because we have seen games and what happens when Unforgiven Zeri does get off the ground. Mm. Uh, it's been a lot of wins uh, for 100 Thieves. Uh, just a few. <laughs> to put it bluntly, just a few. Uh, yeah, uh, well, let's see. Uh, Unforgiven, yeah, he's 5-3 and three on the Zeri with a 7.3 KDA. It's pretty nasty. Uh, so The fact that you can lose three games and yet still be on a 7.3 KDA is pretty disgusting. Yeah, he's uh, he's pretty good. We'll, we'll put it that way. As oh. We'll see. Now, okay, smart move yeah. from Unforgiven Destiny. They they saw Spyrex. They yeah. knew what was about to happen. They're like, yeah, you know what? Spyrex can finally get out of this lane phase. He's able to push back pretty, pretty well. Now four members corralled into this bot uh -oh. lane. Looking for the here. But Firex is, is not split. there on the call yet. They've got a lot of damage. That's going to be the Fates call. Trying to save the life. But Yukino is going to be the first casualty. The flash away from Winsome to survive. They get the kill on Sejuani. And it works out beautifully for FlyQuest so far. Though they are playing with fire at the moment. Waiting for the minions to crash back into the turret. Wow. 100. You still got to be careful with how low some of these members are. The cocoon could have landed, but next stretch line. Pretty the shock wave. They didn't get it. They've got the damage coming in from Spyrex, and he gets the killing spree from Masu, looking for Unforgiven with the barrier as well. But the Ooh. red was not enough to take down Unforgiven. Oh, if the Q connects on Unforgiven, they do find him. But FlyQuest again using this early power, playing through the bot lane. They have level it manages. They had six on Callista. Winsome was able to play so far forward, and they just forced Zeri off of three waves, too. So, wow. that bot lane lead is massive, and FlyQuest is now up 3k gold. Been a really well-executed early game from them. Look at that, just after one wild play where they were hanging around between the two turrets for a good, solid 45 seconds here to make sure they can get these kills. So I was surprised they went in here, because uh, Spyrex looked like he was heading back uh, to the mid lane, but still, we're able to find him. Yukino cues through uh, nothing as the Fates call. A little bit of a uh, Magician's trick there. Yukino falls for it. And then the re-engage, I mean, this was really close to being more for FlyQuest. The re-engage went about as well as it could have for 100 Thieves. Uh, as when some finds pretty on the dredge line, he gets blown up. It's traded out by Spyrax, but watch the cue from Masu. If this connects onto Unforgiven, it is another kill on the back half. Oh, yeah. Just goes wide, yeah. Barely. He was trying to read the play, thinking yep. that he would try to dodge in. Either way, three kills to his name, more plates in the spot lane. Like you talked about the wave discrepancy now between yep. Masu and Unforgiven. There's a reason why we were looking at this bot lane. Masu, Winsome, playing together and how well they are going to mesh. Well, it seems that now that you have more calling, the shot calling from Winsome here with Yuji, it's exactly kind of how I was talking about before, isn't it, Cubby? And I look at the prio now from FlyQuest. Is Winsome 
because they're winning bot, you know, he's able to go over mid. That gets them the free Herald on the side of FlyQuest Challengers. And FlyQuest is off to the races. And what I really like about Kalista comps is that not only can you get ahead early with Kalista, but also your objective control throughout the game is so good given the Ren stacks oh, yeah. and your ability to hit. They just make it so that, you know, 50-50s are more like 60-40s or 65-35s given uh, your combo with Smite. So... I really want to see if FlyQuest can continue to push the pace, because it is very important that FlyQuest pushes the pace in this game, as Cinderazeri will still be a very scary combo later. This is a combination for FlyQuest. They can't really allow to just let up the pressure, yeah. right? It's all about how they play this early to mid game. Kalista is really good at, as you talked about, making sure you secure these objectives, at least a lot of early damage burst potential from Spyrex. The only real late game insurance is Gangplank, and even here, you kind of want him more for this mid game, anyways, compared to the power that's going to be provided from a Zeri, from a Jax, and Sejuani late game. A GP, uh, one of the like the last really scary part of the matchup here is when D Divine Sunder comes in for Jax. After that, GP can kind of manage. It's still as scary if Jax finds the barrels, but uh, I think Sunder is the real scary power spike that Simon's oh. about to hit. Is he pops the all? Just trying further. to scare away Philip yeah. mostly. He's got to trade aggressively, and they see Yuji uh, on the bot side, so Sniper knows that he's on his lonesome up here. Uh, so the fact that Sniper's playing this far forward, I do really like. Uh, but, with Hunter Thieves trying to posture around that dragon, uh, FlyQuest, their bot lane, they were just able to go pick up that wave. Unforgiven doesn't want to drop that wave for the dragon, so we'll be the second dragon going over on time to FlyQuest. You can't fight this if you're nope. Hunter Thieves. You understand. Nope. You're like, yep, nah, it's not worth it. Just get the, get the waves, get the stacks you need to. And going back into the top lane, looking at how Sniper is the youngest player on 100 Thieves. Youngest this player guy, in the league. Yeah, the youngest player in the league. Uh, <laughs> yeah, good point there. This guy, he's been given a lot of tools in this game to try to win out lane and try to hold a lot of power. But we got to get prompts over to Phil. He's, been, uh, he's had a lot of moments where it looked like Sniper was going to get the kill. Think about that flash you talked about before that he was able to burn. Mm -hmm. Nothing came of it. Phillips survives, continues to keep even with Sniper in this lane. And after the Divine Sundere gets built up by Sniper, like <laughs> you talked about, that power point that Jax has, well, Philip is going to have a much easier time. He was even able to get some assist gold from that previous play way yeah. back when with his cannon brush. Oh, now, heads up. Unforgiven, this is just a bad spot. There's no real way to say wow. anything else. He was just dead. Destiny was on a reset. Unforgiven was not, so they forced out the, the skate over the wall, and uh, unfortunately, he found the depth charge on the other side. So that's going to be first brick going over to the side of FlyQuest. I do want to return to your, your point on Philip real quick, because Philip, I, I think his greatest strength when he came in was playing weak side. And uh, keep in mind, this was a matchup where neither jungler has visited top lane. Philip did get to pick his matchup, and I like how Philip, again, knowing that his team just made a really good play on the bot side, he is sacking top already. Uh, but fortunately, it's with some. You like to spy on the top Probably. side, though. Looking for Winsome. On the tower, not moved. enough! Winsome survives! The Titan's Wrath was enough of a shield. Real big, and because of that showdown, Philip can reapproach this top wave. Sniper does get a little bit for himself, but it's not all bad. And FlyQuest continue to be in good shape this game. It's a 4k gold lead, two dragons early. Uh, honestly, given this comp, you really do need a lead like this early, Mad Magical. But props to FlyQuest. They drafted something very aggressive, and they've played to their win cons really well in this game. It seems this game especially that FlyQuest really are a much more cohesive team this time around. The calls they have made, like yeah. just if we even think back to that last one where they were able to get the skate out from Unforgiven, that was set up long in advance if you looked at how the vision was prior to that. Now, there's some vision placed down by 100 Thieves to try to make sure that can't happen again. But FlyQuest are like, fine, we'll just rotate this all onto the top side of the map since now we want to play around Rift Herald. And this is going to be the key for FlyQuest. You know, how much can they snowball at this point of the game? Because look at the marksman items at the moment. That is wow. a completed shield bow for Masu. Again, who they're funneling as FlyQuest. I, this is the youngest team, the team that I pitched as the riskiest build, given how inexperienced the members were compared to other teams in the league. Uh, very early on in the season. And now that we're later in the season, I, we're in the back half of things. FlyQuest, they're putting all their resources in that youngest, most inexperienced player, Masu, who has been really a standout and a big, pleasant surprise this split uh, in Challengers. But I think it says a lot, the faith that FlyQuest has in this player, you know, having a draft like this against Unforgiven Zeri. 
they are they have all confidence in Masu. Yeah. And I can't say I blame them. And a lot of the wins that we've seen FlyQuest challengers get, it has been off the back of Masu's plays and how big this yeah. player has been, especially his positioning. Having something like Kalista really is inherently reliant on positioning and how you're able to fight around these. Oh. So now that you've got all this gold nice and all this buffer. power, I do like that buffer. Yuji, you're to scare off pretty. But going back to the point, this game is built around Masu and Masu carrying for FlyQuest. So 100 Thieves have to be so cautious with how they approach these fights because that's going to be a lot of damage here in this mid game that we're now cresting to. Uh, FlyQuest just playing to protect the Jace. Jace can, of course, shred turrets. And also, by doing this, they do enable Spyrax to move first. It's pretty stuck under turrets. So, so Cubby? Uh, yeah. Um, what are the merits of Prowler's Claw on Jace? Oh, oh snap! We got prowlers on Jace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, I saw that a bit ago, and I I wanted to bring it up, but we were talking about other things, and I saw that I'm like, huh? Now that's something. I I gotta say, this is some new tech for me. Uh, I'm gonna guess, you know, based on what the item gives you, maybe a way to get out of Syndra combos, or uh, you know, buy some space, or attack the Zeri. There are some really funky mechanics with Jace Hammer as well. Uh, so maybe trying to abuse some of those and play really aggressive here okay. uh, as Spyrax is ahead. Also, the the spike compared to uh, uh, some of the other lethality items like Equips, you get move speed off the passive, but it does give you percent shred. Uh, Prowler's Claw, it gives you move speed and flat lethality. Uh, so a little bit of an earlier spike here and looking to really get uh, hit the squishies hard here for 100 Thieves. I mean, it's going to blow up most members outside of you, Kino. Everyone else is very, it's gonna very be real strong right now because they want this third dragon. Ooh, oh, that? that's a good start. Blast. Yep. Doesn't do as much as I was expecting to onto Destiny, but it doesn't matter. A lot. All they're all they're really doing was trying to put down the Rift Herald, get a charge, so they can now look for this third dragon of the game, yep. get themselves within soul point potential. Again, really well played here by FlyQuest. We'll see how much Hunter Thieves wants to answer because FlyQuest they can keep this game state for a little bit if they want. The Shock Blast will help them win out in the end. They can always pull the Snap and Gauge if they want. Uh, given that they have the Fates Call, as Pretty's doing a decent job here uh, contesting the wave, but still, given the strength of FlyQuest, will have to be seated over to them. Like even Cypher's with positioning. Yeah, even with the Empowered Shock Blast not connecting. As, oh, Spyrax! Ooh, that's going to be the flash in. Yukino is going to be the target. He gets a wild growth, but he's not nearly taking up. And Cypher, who I thought had a good flank, had to flash away with the Counter Strike just to survive. That's it, Spyrax again. He's level 12. He even had Stopwatch. Didn't even have to break it. So that play, that attempt from 100 Thieves, not the right target. It's really tough to find targets as Sejuani against Kalista too, because usually you want to farm the Nautilus. Uh, but he's got Fate's Call. Elise, she can go up in the air. There was a stopwatch on Jace. GP can eat an orange, and it's K. So no good targets for Yukino. Tries nope. to find one. Comes up blank, and likewise continue to push their lead. And like I said, Yukino, not tanky. Only now, having completed Radiant Virtue. Yep. And even with that, that's not nearly enough to survive the burst that can come through from all these members that we are talking about. Spyrox's Shock Blast even doing a lot of damage to who is supposed to be your front line. I mean, this is where I really wish I had, like, the, the LCS tools so I can draw on the screen. Or just my epic pen. Because right now, I, I just pretend. Wanna... Just pretend, yeah. you know? We're, we're, I'm going to pretend to draw a big circle around AD itemization when we come back. First, a Spyrax was found. But when some, the insta re-engage flashing forward to fully commit. They just take down Yukino. That's the jungler smite down. Wist is too far ahead at this point. Too strong at this point. They shred the Sejuani. Under Thieves, they can't play. Oh, and here, look at this again. X they flash. get a cocoon. They get the flash out of Destiny. That's big. But it's really more about how they're moving around the map as a unit. This is such a great look of FlyQuest. It's night and day from what we've seen in the previous weeks. It seems like just bringing in Winsome has given them this identity they have lacked for some time. This has been a lot of direction and a very different look from FlyQuest, and honestly one that we're excited to see, because this was a team at times that did look lost on, on the map, uh, that didn't, uh, you know, have early games. It kind of felt like they were waiting for teams to make mistakes in the later stages to out-team fight them, where they did, ha did have some nice moments, but again, it's a team that we had some expectations for coming into the season. Obviously, Keetong, I think that he performed really uh, admirably as a sub, but Winsome, no doubt that he learned a lot playing with Prince. There was also a great video that FlyQuest put up. It's actually Winsome saying thank you and his goodbye to the LCS team, uh, really just talking about how much that time meant for him and how much he did learn, how much he enjoyed working with the team. Great to see Winsome put some of that in action here as he debuts with FlyQuest Challengers. Yeah, it's not, we're not trying to take away anything from Keetong. I think Keetong 
the situation yeah. he was given did a great job as well. It was it his just, meta. He performed admirably. Exactly. It just Winsome. Ooh. You can tell the growth that he's had. And now Pyrex fighting it against Typer. But Winsome's here. Winsome, he's Flowers. all over the map, man. <laughs> you just can't get away from him. And with the TP expended out of pretty, that's a big cooldown burn to not get, to get anything besides Flash. Still, that is something, right? Uh, now, right. Spyrax, he still has the broken stopwatch, so he can prevent the next play, but that is flashed down on Jace. That's big. And Jace will be a problem in the next fight, is that Miramana has been evolved. And we all know what uh, what Jace feels like when, when, when he hits uh, this item breakpoint. It's It does not feel good. Uh, I, though I don't know how he is with the Prowler Skull, how bad that's going to feel. It's still not good. I'm, I'm going to go with that. It's worse. No, it's worse. At this point of the game, you're right. It, if you're the Syndra, Zeri, Lulu, it, it is worse. Yeah, you're gonna feel horrible. I, if I was playing against this, I'd be like, no, please. I, I already have to play dodgeball enough. I don't like this. Well, that said, 100 Thieves, two minutes on the clock. It is a Hextech Soul. Gotta say, that's a hell of a roll here, too, for FlyQuest, given the it poke, is. the range that they have. Is that's not gonna help against GP plus Jace. Those orbital assaults are gonna be feeling, uh, they're gonna pack a little bit of an extra punch. They're able to pick up this next dragon, and for 100 Thieves, I think it really is at this point about punishing the flashes that are down. You can't really punish Winsome because he has the Fates Call, so maybe if they're able to set up a pick, get a couple cooldowns out of FlyQuest before the fight could be really important for them. I think it's even more important is targeting Masu. Three items now completed. Yeah, he's so on bad. Him. He is an item and a half above Unforgiven, a matchup that we we're setting up at the beginning of this yeah. day. And I was even saying, I'm excited to see how Masu is going to compare against an LEC All-Pro and you know what they do? They just send Yuji down there the whole time and be like, all right, we're going to get him fed. We're going to make this the easiest matchup of his life. It doesn't matter if Unforgiven is on one of his best champions in this split. We're going to make sure that he cannot play League of Legends. Been tough, Unforgiven. Uh, we'll see if he's able to get a nice base off and get anything. But, oh, Baron's actually been nah, nah, hit. Nah, nah, nah. Okay, they're bluffing. I need another control ward out of Yukino. I, this is important because we are a minute... Uh, Minute till this upcoming draft. I, I got tripped up because I see the ocean icon, but it's a hex tech. <laughs> I know. I, I know. It's I know. always so still, tricky. They haven't patched this with uh, the next two. I, it, it's a it's a small tilter, but you know what's a, a bigger tilter right now? The fact that uh, you're hundred thieves. You haven't been able to play League of Legends yet. You're down seven and a half k gold to fly quest. And you got to fight this next dragon in twenty five seconds, bro. This game could be canned. Feels like this game so much later too, with how powerful fly quest challengers feel at this moment. They've, the fact you have three items on your ADC at 23 minutes into the game. Oh my god. A Hextech Soul is about to be on the table in 10 seconds. All five members of both teams are now Ooh. corralling around this mid lane, looking to fight over it. 100 Thieves, young players on their team, have to rely on their carry and Unforgiven in Wait, order to get the damage out the they best burn it. they can. They can easily burn this. They're it's looking dead. to turn on the Spire. No, it's dead. You forget that Masu does so much damage to it, and you've lost the soul. And with Sniper marked by the ward, they look for the fight with the Shock Blast. On pretty, Destiny has a wild growth himself, which leaves everyone out to try because of nice use of the Prowler's Call with a double knock of in from the face. Go double kill for Philip. Flash away from the Unforgiven will survive. For two dead, you know what's on the line. That's some fun tech from Spyrax as he gets flashy, he dashes in, he goes gold, and he takes down a kill to go over to FlyQuest. They pick up the soul, and they're looking for what is a clean game against 100 Thieves Challenger, a team that I said was the third best team that we have right now in Challengers. FlyQuest are destroying them. They're looking so clean on this one, and looking at this fight, just watch the damage Spyrax does. So big. It's a nice wild growth from Destiny to cancel that call. damage, but yeah, Crawlers. <laughs> The hammer back goes golden. He knows he pulled off a nice play. As oh, really, really well done and set up from FlyQuest and win some as well. This early game priority has looked so good for them in this game, Mad Magical. And X Tech Soul is going to make it easy to put the finishing touches on this one. A sniper, sniper now. He's been kind of uninteractive. Got the Counter Strike. Tries to dump back onto Philip, but even with that might, it's not enough. FlyQuest continue to cruise as this bot lane trial for them. Unforgiven, uh, Zeri Lulu has been their most played lane. You know if it's up that 100 Thieves are going to take it. FlyQuest, this blue side strategy into that with the Elise, Callista, Nautilus going all early game. 
it's really paid off. And again, this is a look that we haven't seen from this team yet this year, Mad Magical. The fact that the first game we see win some. FlyQuest looks like this makes me really excited for this team as we move into the playoffs uh, in a couple weeks. Exactly. That's the big thing that everyone's got to talk about. The derby that is coming up, moving towards playoffs, looking this clean with just one change. They've only dropped the one kill way early on. That was Winsome between the two towers, too. They still won the trade. And they still won that trade yeah. heavily. It was a good death. Mm -hmm. I, I so, mean, this this is fun. I, I Again, like, when we started off challenges this, this year, we saw a lot of teams with, like, again, I, I think I said six rosters that I felt like could win and no one would bat an eye. Uh, for me, FlyQuest, you know, was kind of on the, the edge or the brink of that, given the team that they had. And now that we see their full roster together, everything that Winsome has picked up in LCS, uh, I mean, this team, the, the direction they played with this game, something we haven't seen all split, peaking just at, I mean, not even peaking, just showing they can do this at the right time, you know? I, this is, they're still working with Winsome, right? This can only get better from here. This is looking like what we saw from FlyQuest last year when they had that huge run, the mid-season push that oh, they had when yeah. everyone was talking about how dominant they were in summer. This is looking reminiscent of that as they crack open the first inhibitor turret of the game of 100 Thieves. 26 minutes in, 100 Thieves have no real way to fight back, but if they don't, the game's just gonna end with them doing nothing. I mean, what can they do, right? All, all they can really do is just have Jax get resources in the side lane, seed the rest. Uh, Jax isn't useful when he groups. The sniper doing all he can, you know, try and picking up this objective bounty. He's gonna die for this too. Uh, as the gates are coming out, and that's a really fed fill up. Oh, the TP. Okay. That's worth. TP. Yeah, that's worth. That's definitely worth. All right. Honestly, 100 Thieves will take that. I mean, that, that's really... They need to get cold. I will say, uh, Fly Quest, they're, you're on the clock now a little bit. I, I, I don't think you want to fight with Elder uh, being on the table. I think you'd rather end the game before uh, Elder spawns. So we'll see if Fly Quest can knock down this last lane and really make this... What, for me, has been the best game I've seen from Fly Quest all split. But the game's not over, as you rightfully called yeah, out. Yeah, a couple more Still steps. Two more minutes until that Elder spawns. And like you said, I do not think FlyQuest should fight over that either. It would be so risky against 100. That gives them an avenue to have Snowball yeah. back into the game. That's why you just group first. up everyone here. Try to take down the final inhibitor turret of the game. We've got minions already pouring down from mid, escorted by Spyrex. Growling back 100 Thieves around this final turret. Hey, you even see the spiders? They're hitting pretty hard now with Hextech Soul too. That's no fun. Uh, Slow. Jeez. Yeah. That's no fun. As Oh, boy. Okay. Wow. Well, that's a All big right. shock blast from the Jace. Uh, FlyQuest again. I mean, they have one more land to go. They're pointing this out rather nicely. The 100 Thieves decides to fight here. Before the damage. You, oh, you know, pretty squishy. Hasn't got any tanky stats outside of that Radiant Virtuous. Masu ate up a full Unleashed Power and stills like, yeah, fine, whatever. That's it. Next wave, this falls, and we'll have to see Nexus turrets. And triple and Hibs down just might be an elder as FlyQuest taking this a little bit slow, but they don't want to make any mistakes. They do realize, you know, if they feed a couple shutdowns over to Zeri, life could get hard for them still. But FlyQuest just trying to play this out with respect, but some of the tools for 100 Thieves are now down. No unleash power, and that will be the third inhibitor down. FlyQuest, you gotta... Okay, they're not gonna push. Oh, that's Ooh, risky. No yeah, Matsu oh, had to flash oh, away. That actually doing? is really risky, because that's doing? gonna be the lightning crash. FlyQuest, that is devastating right there. You nearly got yourself caught out, or did you? Oh. Can you fight back? You're just too fed. It doesn't matter. It looks okay. like they caught out, but they can still fight back so valiantly against 100 Thieves because they got the gold in their pockets so they can just wail away on 100 Thieves, get everyone back into the game with no sniper. 4v5, the pullback in onto Yukino, know, that damage in, even nice with a nice guy of the week. They've got the TP coming in from Philip. They've got minions corralled. They've got more pouring in from the top, but they decide to back off. 15 seconds until Elder. I gotta say, I mean, health bars are kind of low for Elder. I, I think that FlyQuest, they haven't played this out as cleanly as they would have liked. Uh, but it still is three and hips down. Double super creeps running on in. So no contest from 100 Thieves. They're gonna have to try and survive the Elder push. A little frisky there from FlyQuest is uh, the portal exit. They, they didn't get the whole team in there. You know, it, it, was, a, it was a faulty portal. It yeah. didn't go their way. <laughs> faulty portal, but I mean, it almost felt like a bait because it looked bad at first. I'm like, uh oh, maybe that, this, maybe that's the moment. Maybe that's the moment. 100 thieves get back in, but they just have so much gold. It doesn't. Just matter. remember, guys, if you're gonna hit the eject button, hit it together. Yeah. All right. So, regardless, 12k. Fly, see, 
They've got Elder Dragon as well. The Baron spawns up in four seconds. They're just getting this one to cleanly end out this game. They're not they're not willing to risk anything in this game. Yeah, I I feel like FlyQuest managed this game with like, you know, five percent interest stocks only. Or like bonds. They they, they put everything in bonds, you know? It's 30 year investments. <laughs> there, there, there was no no rolling the dice on crypto or anything like that. It, it was all about, you know, the, the Roth IRA and mutual funds here. Do you, you have any so idea old. what I'm talking about, Matt Magical? You're so old, Covey. Yeah, you sure. should probably you should probably figure out uh, oh, oh no! no! I went some alright. That was a oh, lot of power. That was a lot more than I expected, but still regardless, that look at that. The damage that came in from just having a Hexec Dragon and Sniper having to dodge away. 4v5, be damned. FlyQuest, they've got the minions. They're pouring into the base of 100 Thieves. They can take down these Nexus Turrets, and they've got enough damage. They're corralling back in 100 yet again, but Elder's they've got to be careful. There goes one. One snipe, two snipe. Where's the three snipe on Unforgiven? It's a double kill for Spyrex, as everyone will fall from 100 Thieves. Pretty, the last one surviving, but finally dies to the triple kill of Spyrex. And what a game from FlyQuest. Really can't say enough great things about the debut of Winsome. That was the best look I've seen from FlyQuest all year. As they drafted a strategy where they needed to be up 4k gold at 14 minutes. They got it. Like, they figured it out. They played that out very cleanly using their prio. The only tools that they had. Make sure the 100 Thieves could never really get in the game. FlyQuest took a really sound win against a good team we have in the league. They did exactly what you said, Cubby, at the very beginning. It was the Raptors, Red, Krugs, Gank. And it, from that moment, it was FlyQuest Challenger's game. They had control the whole time. It was always the reactive plays that 100 Thieves were making that they just weren't making in time to counteract what FlyQuest had done. Well done for that first uh, game victory. But we're going to toss it over a break, and when we come back, Mazel will join you in that very room that you have stolen away from him, Cubby. Yeah. So make sure you all stay tuned.